all started when we were brought here as slaves from Africa. It all said, 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 all started when we were brought here as 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 slaps 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 as as slaves from Africa. It all said, all said, all it all it all it all it all said, all it all it all it all said, all said, all it all it all it all started. It all said, 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 all when we were brought, when we were, 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 when we all started. When we were brought here as slaves from Africa, it all started. When we were, when we were brought, when we were brought, when we were brought, when we were, when we, when we, when we all started. When we were brought here as slaves from Africa, it all started. It all said when we, when we, when we were Africa, it all started with with Africa. It all started with Africa. With Africa. With, a with Africa, it all started when we were when we when we when we when we we were Africa. It all started. It all started. It all it all it all it it all it it all started. It all started. It all started when we when we when we were Africa. It all started. It all it all started when we were brought here as slut as slut as slut as slut in Africa. It all started when we were brought here as slut from Africa. It all started. When we 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 I'd like to do something unusual, but it's going to require discipline on all our parts. I want everyone, TAs, everyone, to say just one thing really quickly about this, for the record, so that this, people watching this um, uh, webcast and people watching the recording years from now will get, like, our thoughts. Okay? So, uh, we're going to start with those in the Google Hangouts, uh, Max, Erica, then Dave, then Amaris, then we'll go to the table, and Anna and Jason, and I will also invite Regina to grab the mic from Jason at the end and just say one thing, okay? Or you can, you can be just before Jason. Discipline to everybody, one thing. Amaris, or sorry, Max, one thing. Uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again, I love how much it reminds me of a... Uh, of a buggy like mp3 i think it's it's such a great poem for the digital age and for just addressing all of the um the the different media that we uh take in all the time you know that's not just textual yeah thank you max and that's actually how it came out uh she and her collaborator val Gentil noticed that the recording that they had had of jeffrey holder had been corrupted that's the word they used the file had been corrupted Corrupted. thank you yeah not yep. buggy. Corrupted. corrupted yeah exactly erica quick thought on this um yeah i i agree and i also feel like it what she does with her voice is amazing yeah. And reminds us that the human voice is one of the best technologies. There is a moment there where it's operatic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's genuinely classically operatic, and that just the contrast of genres is really worth talking about. Dave Poplar, thought on this? I actually can't listen to it. It's like the proverbial nails on a chalkboard for me. So um, some, some things hit and some things don't. And, you know, I appreciate Tracy Morris, but... Uh, uh, this one wasn't for me. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we'll have a chance to get back to that. I didn't. I didn't remember that from earlier. Amaris. Um, kind of echoing Erica. I think it's a stunning vocal performance, and kind of there's. But it's really interesting that there's this duality between she's kind of like choking and stuttering on words that imply you know so much suffering, um, but she's also singing it. So um, I think there's a lot you know to think about. And it's a really really great interesting piece. Cool. We're going to go to Jason, then Regina, then Anna. Jason, quickly. Um, what is so uh, heartbreaking or more aptly like soul-crushing about the piece to me is the way that it attempts to prevent the sentence from being spoken and to hold 
the people who are being described in that sentence um, to hold them away from their fate for a period of time, at least for as long as the performance can last. Mm. Excellent. Regina? Um, I love this, and I I really also love Emily Dickinson's kind of like use of the M dash, and like hearing this, it kind of feels like she's sticking like this giant M dash through the structure of the poem, like she's just, just like removing any structure of sentence, and in that sense, um, like we talk about like when language fails us, like when the structure of sentences fail us, when the structure of poetry fails us, that um, she's destroying the structure of the poem here, uh, much like there has been other destruction. So well put, Regina. Thank you. Anna Strong? Uh, so the thing that always gets me about this, um, this performance poem piece um, is the way that it takes a deceptively simple sentence, a, a sentence that has a subject and a verb and a predicate and all the things a sentence is supposed to have, and it reintroduces this complexity at the level of the syllable, which is really extraordinary. Mm, well put. Let's go to the table. Uh, you're not Gabe, you're Carlos. Yes. Um, yeah, I really like this piece because it, it makes me think a lot about um, sort of like what the words we use contain, especially when they're used to um, not, well, mythologize and also talk about history. Um, and sort of when those words fail and how do they fail and what do they contain when you can say, all right, here's a sentence that covers well, it all started, and then, you know, this, this such a charged, turbulent uh, thing that you're trying to capture in this one soundbite. I don't know. Yeah, great. Thank you. Lily? Um, I think it shows the, as like some others have said, um, the depth of the violence contained in, in starting a, a film with a very sonorous and um, smooth and easily said, it all started when we were brought here as slaves from Africa. Um, how actually violent that um, act is, that, that sentence, and um, she embodies the violence um, that the hearing the sentence did to her and does to black history in the United States by breaking it apart and like uh, showing it as the jagged, violent, broken thing that it is not smooth and easy. Uh, for me, uh, my turn. For me, um, it always makes me think of American schools and schooling, right? So Jeffrey Holder is given this line to be, to produce what Tracy correctly calls, I think, the Afro-Shakespearean voice, the, the man who is charged, an African-American who is charged by Hollywood or whoever's producing a kind of TV show about civic life, and, he's, and he does this once upon a timeness, and he reduces the agonies of the Middle Passage to a sentence. Uh, and the we is very troubling, and there's all kinds of problems, and it is schooling, it is what, it is socialization. And one of the things that the most of the Mod Po poems have done, and not just via in this week, which I hope we'll talk about, but, but so many other poems, uh, Stein and Niedeker, and so many other poems take what we are told is true through the perfect sentence and seek ways to halt it, destroy it, or make it not work. Uh, and it is about socialization to language. And so many of our poets are interested in that, and she performs that. And Tracy Morris is a, um, is a student of this. Uh, she is someone that I seek out uh, as a friend to tell me something that's going to make me feel better. She's very, a very positive person. Um, in her graduate study, she studied, Zach, here's a book, or Tyler. She studied, she wrote her dissertation on Austin. And the book that she worked most closely on is How to Do Things with Words. It's a base, based on his lecture series at Harvard a few years earlier. How to Do Things with Words. And if, if I had to describe what Tracy Morris's contribution to po American poetry and poetics is right now, and it does fit with what we're studying this week, um, is the desire to do things with words. And of course, she does that with her voice, her throat, her mouth, her tenor, her timbre, her tongue. And that body is the body that she's reckoning 
in that disembodied voice that was Jeffrey Holder's, how to do things with words, Tracy would say that the act of doing things with words is as political as any other act. Poetry does things. And uh, so that was, that's my extended thought, and I'm sorry I went on so long. Emily, your thought on this? Ah, uh, yeah, that was I hate going after you, Al. But um, yeah, I love this poem. It's one of my favorite in the course, and I was struck, I, I think, by what Max said earlier, and, and but Tracy um, has said herself that this is inspired by um, a piece of broken machinery, and what she's doing is uh, trying to behave like a type of broken machine. And um, this entire kind of chapter is about what is the possibility of machines to articulate something about human experience, and she shows that. Um, that kind of that yeah, kind of automated or kind of machine-like mode is one that can articulate a great deal of human pain um, and human suffering, and it's yeah really incredible. Gabe, before you say your thing, I'm just gonna. There was a, a student, Jake Swinghammer, actually, in our class, who did a shout out in the forums to Emily Harnett for your last word on Thanks. the in the African. Uh, video, which was the last video of the syllabus. And here's what you said. She's just asking a question, which is a deeply important one, of how we represent our narratives, imaginary narratives, our life experience, our shared experience. And we had a conversation once, maybe you turned to Amaris at this moment. I remember this. Uh, we had a conversation once maybe when we were quoting Charles Bernstein, but he said something along the lines that the point of literature isn't to give questions, give answers, but to ask questions. And Jake says, I just thought that was the great way to wrap up the last video of the course as it begs us to continue reading literature and to continue asking ourselves questions about poetry itself. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> and you're supposed to say thanks, Emily, because you're the one who said that. <laughs> Gabe. Yeah, what I was going to say is pretty simple and somewhat repetitive of what other people are saying. But what interests me so much about this poem and what interests me about a lot of Tracy Morris's work, poems like um, The Mistress Gets Her Ass Kicked or My Great Grandmother Meets a Bush Supporter, um, is that she's taking a phrase that is uh, purposefully vague. It's almost censoring even. Um, and without adding anything to it, without adding words to it, without... Um, expanding on it or editing it really is uh, exposing all those things that are being left out of it. And it's just sort of, it's sort of masterful in the sense that you kind of have to ask how it's even happening because we don't see it happening. We don't see her revealing to us um, all these things that aren't being said by the it all and it all started when or whatever. But we do feel those things and we're all talking about them and we all talked about violence like it was actually being said, but it was never said is the thing that's, I mean, it's kind of just, it's kind of interesting about it is like, there is literally not a violent phrase in that sentence, but of course there is, there's many. Um, and, and that's what I think her work in, in the sounds that she's making is, that's what's interesting about it to me. Fantastic, all right, thank you. Um, Jess, I think Jess wanted to say something. Uh, can you give Je Jason Jess the, hi Jess. Hi. Um, How you doing? You like this piece? I like this piece a lot. Um, this piece really uh, makes me think about like intention and repetition and how they go hand in hand. Because I know in school we learn about anaphora and that structured repetition. When artists and poets, they you know, repeat like the same word over and over again throughout a clause or a stanza. But what happens in this piece is she kind of focuses in the spaces in between the words. And not one word. It's not anaphora. It's not. It's kind of unstructured repetition, it's intention and repetition going hand in hand, how the repetition forces us to not only hear the words over and over again, but to feel their implications. Mm -hmm. And to not just hear it once, but hear it several times in different areas. And I feel like that's, and that brings the whole thing to a full circle. And that's kind of what I got out of the entire Very thing. well said, very well said.